Hi everyone, it's Mary. Welcome to Kiki and Kibitz and today's edition of 90 Days and 900 Seconds. So we have Happily Ever After, Season 7, Episode 3, Don't Take Me For Granted. Shaw Productions is taking me for granted and taking you for granted. I'm telling you, with this recycle cast and this these storylines, people. But here we go. I'm going to set the timer and wrap this up for you guys in 900 seconds. 15 minutes on the timer. Here we go. Kim and Usman. Kim is heading to Nigeria to get her man and to get the blessing from the family Usman. So the one thing that I love the most is how Jamal tries to like object, but he is so supportive at the same time. And you just got to love him for it. He is so lovingly supportive, but he lets his mom know that he is not happy about this whole situation. So Jamal drops Kim off at the airport. Kim is off to Nigeria to get her man. And her man is waiting for her at the airport with stuffed animals that he looked like he got from a fucking carnival. Okay, what was up with that, Usman? You couldn't come to the airport with better gifts and some stuffed animals looking like you got from a carnival. I'm sorry. So he actually kissed her at the airport. That was fucking a plus there. And they get back to the air. They 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 get back to the hotel where he or you know he orders fancy champagne, food. Tells the guy to make sure you lock the door because he's gonna give her some of the yammy yammy, but. They fall asleep. This is where we find out that he, they have numerous nicknames for the yammy yammy. Um, fertilizer, power bag, African ingredient. Okay, that was a little bit TMI. But I don't know what is up with these guys naming their, their personal parts. But whatever floats your boat. So... This is where we have the highlight of their section. They go go karting. I thought that was adorable. So they go go karting, and then, then they have the discussion about the second wife. And Kim is like, "I'm not going to be no sister wife. This is not part of my culture. I'm doing this for you, but I'm not going to be a sister wife." And this is where Usman crudely, but I mean, it's a fact, points out to Kimberly that they are going to be sharing the same dick. And Kimberly doesn't like the mental image of it, nevertheless hearing hearing it from Usman's mouth. And Usman did put it very crudely to her. So I do understand why Kim got pissed the fuck off, but it is the truth. They are going to be sharing the same dick. So Kim's going to have to get used to the idea. So she says that, you know, she's going to make him a bleach to penis if he thinks that he's going to sleep with the second wife and then sleep with her, you know, you know, at the same time while they're all in town. I mean, Kim, you got to get used to the idea if you're going to do this whole second wife thing. That's all I'm saying. So the segment leads off with her being really, really pissed off and all riled up. So, like, we didn't see that coming. Moving on to Jenny and Summit. Their segment was very brief this week. Basically, Summit is still upset that his mommy number two, Jenny, yelled at him after his mommy number one yelled at him. So, basically, he, you know, it starts off with Summit looking very sad. And he's like, you know, last night was horrible. My mother disowned me. My family hates me. I'm in a horrible position. And then you, Jenny, my mommy number two, yelled at me. And you were just like so horrible to me for no reason. And I can't deal with that. Because if my first mommy's going to yell at me, the least I could have is my second mommy support me. 
And Jenny's like, you know, you're right, Samit. I'm sorry. I was just upset because I've been in India for 10 years and I haven't taken a Rosetta Stone course. I haven't taken Duolingo. I don't know a word of Hindi. I don't even know the insults. So I couldn't understand a word of what the fuck was going on during the whole conversation. And when you got out and walked out with your mother, I had no idea if you were coming back what the fuck was going on. So when you walk back in, I just flipped the fuck out and I went to go rip your head off. So, you know, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, blah, blah, blah. I promise I'll be there for you. I'll be, I'll be your support. And, you know, so they go for the walk in the park and they feel better. They give each other a hug and there goes their segment. So Submit feels better because he's going to get the support from mommy number two that he needs because his real mommy has disowned him. So there you go, Jenny and Submit. And the highlight, I guess, of the whole Jenny and Submit segment is Jenny's saris. I mean, I, I kind of like what she wears. They're pretty colors, pretty patterns. I mean, I, I can't find another highlight. So I'm moving on. Jovi and Yara. Can you imagine? Yara has to be a mom 24-7. Are you fucking stupid? Like, can you imagine actually having a child and being a mother 24-7? What is wrong with Myla? Come on, child. What is wrong with you? Gwen is no one's nanny. That is one thing uh, that we know and Yara needs to learn. Gwen could be the best mother-in-law, but she is no one's nanny. So they go on a boat ride. Jovi and Gwen talk. Gwen expresses her feelings. She's, you know, willing to be there, but she's no one's nanny. They all kiss and make up and everything is fine. So um, Gwen asks Yara about her mom. Well, actually, Yara expressed that the whole you know, miscommunication was because she's so used to the cultural difference with um, Ukrainian grandmothers because Ukrainian grandmothers are the type to like practically move into your house and you have to throw them out. So Gwen asked Yara how her mom is doing and Yara's like, you know, um, and she misses her. It's been three years. They would like to go travel to see her. And Gwen is like, well, I don't think it's a good time considering the political climate that's going on. And um, considering that Yara doesn't have her green card, it might be hard for her to get back in. And, you know, all these other considerations, Gwen doesn't think it's a good time for them to travel. So um, the next scene, da 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 Jovi's like, guess what I have, Yara? Yara's like, what is it? Are you pregnant? Tell me, what is it? It's your green card interview. Oh my goodness, Myla. Mommy's getting her green card and she doesn't need daddy anymore. Wait, you don't have your green card just yet and I have to go with you to the interview. Then they realize that they know so little about each other that they're going to miserably fail the interview. Jovi doesn't even know Yara's favorite color, has no idea what she likes to eat, which is beige and salads. How basic can you be? The girl's favorite color is beige, and she, her favorite food is salads. Okay, people. So she calls her mom. And she gets all emotional because she misses her. She wants to see her. And um, let's see how this turns out. The highlight of this week and every week of Jovi and Yara's segment will be Myla and her hairstyles and her adorable little hair bows. I love the green ones this week. Adorable. Moving on, we have Liz and Ed. Redemption tour. Part two, and I have a feeling this whole this whole season is going to be the Liz and Ed redemption tour. So first of all, we start off with Liz in bed shitting her pants because she's worried about Ed meeting Rich because every time Ed meets Rich, he comes back and he like breaks up with her. 
So she's actually in bed, shitting her pants, worried that she's going to get broken up with again. Girl, please. And all I have to say is watch these two and their confessionals, their scenes, their body language is everything. Everything. It's not necessarily what they say, but their body language people. O-M-G. So they go meet Liz's friend, Barry. Now, is Barry the friend without benefits? They've been friends for like forever. And can you imagine her like telling you, I want you to meet my fiance and her walking in with this fucker? I would be so pissed the fuck off if I was Barry. Barry was looking at Ed like he was a total fucking asshole. And that was not scripted. That was real life. So um, use the party. Like, Ed, what the fuck? Are you four years old? I know you're a big fucking pervert, but still, use the potty. Come on, Ed. I mean, take a piss, please. So she's, she's fucking crying over him. Her friend is even looking at her like, why are you crying over this asshole? So they get another dog, and the dog is, you know, one of the highlights of their segment. Believe it or not, there are two highlights to the Liz and Ed segment, and I'm getting to the second one. But their new dog Leah is the highlight is is one of the highlights. So Liz is like, I want to you know do everything with Ed. I want to you know immerse myself with Ed. So I'm going to be his photography assistant. I'm going to take up photography as a hobby. We're going to take pictures of my friend, Alex, who happens to be a professional model. A lot of Liz's friends are getting airtime so far, and it's only episode three, people, okay? So they go to meet her friend, Alex, who is a professional model, in the dark, in the park. What is up with going out in the dark in in? And I don't know, he met Rich in the dark in the park. They're taking pictures in the dark. Like, what the fuck? So, anyway, they go and they're taking pictures of Alex. And he is being a rude, condescending bastard. No surprise there. And he starts flirting with Alex right in front of Liz's face. No surprise there. So, it's basically like, what the fuck? He was not trying to teach Liz anything. He was just being a prick. And Liz was getting pissed the fuck off. So the second highlight of this segment was when he was showing Liz the pictures and he was trying to act like he was the Mac Daddy of photography. And Liz was like, you know, it looks like she has no neck here. No, seriously, Ed, the way, it, the way these pictures are, it looks like she has no neck. And he gets so pissed the fuck off because he is so sensitive about the fact that he has no neck. <sighs> That's all I have to say about these two. Moving on to Blau and Shida. Shida tried to have a conversation with her husband and she was gaslighted as usual. She disappointed him. I love how she tried to stand up for herself, though. I love how she tried to stand up for herself. But as usual, Bilal browbeated her until she gave in. But she needs him to stand up for him for, for her. But he will never. He will never stand up for you, woman. He will never stand up for you. And it's sad. And why the fuck were you bringing him a fucking breakfast tray in bed? I don't get it. I don't get it. I guess the highlight of this is Shida slapping herself in the confessional. Because, you know, she's beautiful. But as she is at this point, and she is just like a doll that's getting abused. It's just like, you know, just let's just take Shida and just like abuse her. But I love how, like, no matter what, she just, like, no. And she just try, she just keeps coming back and tries to stand up for herself. But that gaslighting bastard keeps browbeating her. The shame. 
and moving on to it's a shame. And I have 53 seconds to cover this bitch. Angela. Billy, you better lose her number. That's all I have to say. Because you are going to regret this. Billy, stripper, dancer, and kidney transplant wait list recipient. Apparently, he's on the kidney transplant wait list. Um, Michael is scamming. Michael scamming? Mm-hmm. Sure. Michael scamming. Angela, all I have to say is those messages that you show you were showing your poor attorney Lou his his facial expression. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. But guys, did you see these did, did this this fucking um supposed WhatsApp message from Michael? First of all, okay, I'm gonna go over a little bit because I really want to get into this. First of all, there was no no name on top. You notice that. Second of all, it was voice message, voice message, voice message. Then one line of text message, send me the 5k voice message, voice message, voice message. Who the fuck? If you were trying to scam somebody, if you're trying to get money out of somebody, why the hell would you, you know, send a bunch of voice messages, bunch of voice messages, bunch of voice messages, and then decide to type one line Send me the 5K and I will take it down. And then leave a bunch of other voice messages. No, motherfucker, I would leave that in a voice message as well. I mean, why would you type that and then leave a bunch of other voice messages? Make it make sense to me. Make it make sense to me because it makes no sense. Michael Scamming. Michael's the one that's scamming. Meanwhile, she's sitting, she's sitting in the park talking to Billy from Canada, doing a little TikTok dance, shaking her boobies. Then she's telling Lou, you know, she doesn't get a phone sex anymore from Michael. Poor Lou, the attorney, sitting there like, uh, my retainer's not big enough. I don't get paid enough. My hourly is not big enough for this shit. Like the counseling centers around the corner, Angela. I think you wandered into the wrong building. And, I, you know, I, I just, I, I can't. I can't. And I, what the fuck? Why did we have to be subjected to Angela doing yoga? She looked like she was trying to take a shit. I'm sorry. All her yoga poses, she looked like she was trying to take a shit. Okay. I'm done. That's it, guys. I'm done. And thank you so much for watching me. And catch my recap next week. Please subscribe if you don't already. Hit the like button. And if you appreciate all my efforts of watching the show so you don't have to, please hit the thanks button down there and send me a little super thanks. I would greatly appreciate it. And um, thank you so much. Catch you next week. Bye.